Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today I want to look at a couple of partisans, which were pole arms from the late medieval early renaissance period, including this original and a new uh, reconstruction that we've done. Stay tuned. All right, so this is an original partisan from right around the year 1500. Uh, this thing is pretty crazy because it goes from half an inch thick down here at the base to just paper thin out at the edges. Uh, this uh, thing is 32 inches long, the head uh, of this pole arm, which is basically, it's a, it's a sword on a stick. And this whole thing right now Oh, it weighs about five pounds, so 2,400 grams. That said, it's missing possibly a foot and a half of its shaft because it was brought back to the United States on an airplane in the 1960s when six feet was the longest thing that you could actually put on an airplane. So like many pole arms from that period, someone just cut it off. Too bad, but it's nice to have it. Uh, this thing has clearly been painted at some point, right? It was probably hanging in some manor house or, you know, city hall or something like that until it was sold on the antiques market uh, 50 years ago and then brought into the US. Uh, partisans are clearly a kind of spear that can also be used for cutting, right? So this blade is very rigid, has no flex to it essentially, and it has very sharp edges. These wings right here serve a couple of functions, uh, one of which is parrying, right? So if someone is cutting towards you, you can parry with this piece and you can catch their blade. The other thing these wings are good for is pushing, right? So you can trap your opponent. Uh, you can push this against their armor or against their flesh. Right? These are really good for example, for pushing against their knee, uh, which is horrible. <laughs> uh, so it's part of uh, really the offensive and defensive elements of the weapon. Now you can see that this partisan has langets, which are right, reinforcing strips of iron that run along the haft, that run the entire length of the remaining haft. Uh, they probably terminated right before the end uh, of the stick. This is a little unusual that these langets are so long. Now we've done some videos in the past about what langets do and what they're for. One of the things they do is to help secure the head to the shaft sometimes. They also protect the shaft from cuts, right? From sword cuts or cuts with another pole arm, which might otherwise really significantly damage the shaft and compromise the use of the weapon. Uh, these ones, these langets, are welded to the socket, which is one of the ways they were done. And these are attached with rivets or clinch nails. You can see that they are offset, so they're probably clinch nails that go in and turn instead of rivets that go through at an angle. Um, and these langets, you can see, are not inset into the wood, right? Instead, they run on the outside of the wood. Now, this velvet and this tassel are stuff that was added after the use life of this weapon. Now, partisans weren't just a normal, everyday battlefield weapon, right? They always had kind of a heroic air to them. They're larger than life. They're a really quite elegant weapon. And we see them very often in the historical record, uh, in paintings and in collections, as 
the weapons of the bodyguards of rich and famous people. And so you might be the elector of Saxony or something like that. If you were a prince elector, your guards might have matching partisans, which were part of your retinue that you know, expressed how important you were. And so they're similar to a halberd or a roncone or a whole bunch of other types of pole arms, uh, but these seem to have been a bit rarer and a bit more rarefied or elite class. Uh, they were also a knightly dueling weapon, but later, right? So 1500, we're talking early Renaissance, which is really fitting. These kinds of spear-like pole arms in many ways kind of harkened back to classical weapons, classical duels between Greek heroes, which especially, you know, the Italians were really into early in the Renaissance. So here's an original piece. Pretty cool. I'm touching this one with my dirty hands because this thing is painted uh, and everything. I'm gonna clean it up. Don't worry, uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> and now let me show you one that I just finished making. So this one, the shaft is longer and it's in a slightly different form than that original, although its dimensions are also historically accurate. Right? So these wings here are six inches across. The blade on this one is more parallel and about two and a half inches across. The head of this piece is uh, 29 inches long, so it's a little bit shorter and you can see the thick central ridge that runs down it, right? So this one is hollow ground and it is uh, three eighths of an inch thick of hardened 1070 carbon steel, which means that it is very rigid, just like the original. Now on this one, we opted to do something a little different with the langets for the customer, right? So these langets are inset slightly into the shaft so that you can slide your hands up it readily without kind of coming into contact or running into the end of those langets. And the shaft has facets on the sides, which help with some edge alignment uh, there, so you know really where your edge is pointed. Now you'll notice that these langets on this one are to the cutting edges of the weapon instead of to the flats. Historically, we see both of these arrangements of langets, right? Sometimes they are on parallel to the cutting edges. Sometimes they're parallel to the flat edges of the blade. They both happen all over the place. Sometimes they're in set. Sometimes they're not, this happens too. On this one, we've opted to run the langet under the socket instead of welding it to the socket and have pinned it through. This also happens historically all the time. There are just a bunch of ways that these things were constructed that are all historically accurate and that all work, right? So we have a bit of a longer socket on this one than on the original, which keeps this completely secure uh, and well-placed on there. Uh, these things are just a crazy weapon. Um, they're really cool. They are really quite a bit of work uh, to make since the central ridge on these is so thick keep them rigid and they're going to be under potentially a lot of force as they're moving. So you have to be quite careful uh, with your metallurgy and your tempering and all of that. So partisans, a really cool medieval and early Renaissance weapon. Uh, take a look at you know some historical examples. They're just 
one of my favorites. So I thought I'd share these with you. Thanks very much. Take care.